So you're thinking about moving to Sarasota, Florida. Well, in today's video, I'll be going over the pros and cons of living here in Sarasota, Florida. And no, this is not your average, oh, the weather is great or the cost of living is too high type video. Uh-uh, not today. This is gonna be real stuff. And stick around with me because the last of each section is gonna be the juiciest and most surprising of all. All right, let's do this. So I'm gonna start right out with the pros. And I have nine pros for you here today. Number nine, on the list is our beaches. Okay, there it is no secret that Siesta Key and the Sarasota area in general are world renowned for their famous beaches from the sugary white powdery sands to the plenty of parking to all the different styles and the shelling and the shark tooth hunting. I mean, this is the place to go if you love to be on a beach and the waters are beautiful, crystal clear most of the time during the year when there's no storms coming through but it's just beautiful beaches well maintained facilities are great so you really can't lose when it comes to our beaches and it's why it made the list of our pros as number nine number eight on our pros list our activities wow we have so many activities going on at any given moment throughout the county from fairs to markets, to flea markets, to concerts, to open air uh, auditorium. I mean, you name it, there are plenty of things to do here. And many of the things are often free. They're often out in the open, enjoying this beautiful weather, whether it's sunset or during the day, on a weekend, on a weekday, it doesn't seem to matter. There are always things happening here and all across the boards. I mean, from fine art to cultural things to just your good old average band coming through town and art festivals. And we even have sandcastle festivals and exotic car shows, classic car shows, you name it. And let me not forget to mention, I mean, we're known for the circus here and not just your average traveling circus. We have a fixed established circus school and circus performing ring here in Sarasota. So if you are looking for something to do, and be active out around town, Sarasota's it and it's why it made the number eight spot on my pro list. Hitting number seven on the pro list is definitely our weather. Yes, this area, or at least being so close to the equator, many of us enjoy the beautiful tropical-esque weather throughout the year. We can get a little brisk here, and usually that happens around February of every year. That's If that's when we're gonna hit our lowest temperatures, that's typically the month that it happens. Otherwise, we're enjoying anywhere from 70 to 80 degrees most of the year, and we have a nice tropical breeze uh, flowing across and it ne of course there's the humidity which some people you know that can be a bit much but it's typically really nice to feel that on your skin and you're never dried out many people I know I lived in the desert for uh, a few years out in California and I actually suffered from dry eye because it was so dry immediately after moving here all of our skin conditions all of my dry eye stuff went away so it there's something to be said for that humidity it's good for us and may do you know a number on your hair but hey we got plenty of products to take care of that. So weather is definitely coming in strong at number seven on the pro list. Number six on my pro list is shopping. Oh yes, Sarasota, Florida. This area is loaded with wonderful, fabulous shopping. So if you love to shop or if you even are a bargain hunter or anything like that, this is the place to be. We have lots of antique stores, lots of Goodwill or, uh, you know, thrift stores where people will literally put tagged items, uh, donate tagged items, you name it. So you can always find a good treasure hunt if that's your thing. But if you like the new stuff, we have two great and one major big anchor mall, which is the UTC, University Town Center Mall. And this is our main newest indoor mall, but all around it, there's also strip malls on top of it. So yes, you have your Macy's and your Saxon Avenue and inside your Pottery Barn, your R House, your Crate and Barrel, I mean, some big name anchor stores and of course your typical clothing stores, but then all around it is where your restaurants are like the Cheesecake Factory and Seasons 52 and all sorts of restaurants and treats and, and like crumble cookie and, you know, Menchie's frozen yogurt. I mean, you name it, it's here. Super Target, it's all right here in that area where the UTC mall is. And that's our biggest anchor mall. So shopping is definitely a big thing to do here. Uh, lots of home goods stores, home sense, Marshalls, Home Goods, 
TJ, you name it. So if shopping is your thing, this is the place for you. And that's why it hit number six on my pro list. By the way, if you're new here to the channel and you want to be the first to learn all there is to know about moving to the Sarasota, Florida area, then definitely hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss another video. Let's get to it. Number five on the pro list for living in Sarasota, Florida is our schools. We have some top-notch amazing schools from gifted schools to your regular public schools to private schools to charter schools I mean you name it we have it here and many of these schools all of them have been ranked up to a a plus I mean they are some seriously well-run schools and Florida is a choice state school so if you're not zoned for a particular school that you want your child to attend then you can still choice into that school now I always tell everyone if you want to guarantee your placement into a school, absolutely be in the zone for it. But just because you're not doesn't mean you don't have a shot at getting your child into the school of your choice. So that's why the schools made my pro list at number five in Sarasota. Now coming in at number four on my pro list for living here in Sarasota, Florida has to be its cleanliness. Yes, I've visited major cities, Boston, New York City, San Diego, LA, Miami. I mean, big cities. And I I can't get over just how clean and nice this area is. We have so many street sweepers. We have so many county city workers that go through and pick up and clean. There's trash cans everywhere. It just overall for the size and for the popularity, it really is kept up and well-maintained and clean. And it's just so nice and refreshing. And it seems like most people here like to take care of their cities. So they are always picking up after themselves. I mean, sure, you'll see a piece here and there, but it's not like you see in a lot of other major cities. So that's why for me, Sarasota definitely needed to be on number four on my pro list. Number three on the pro list for living in Sarasota, Florida is safety. I can't tell you how many times I've been downtown Sarasota, either at a performance that I was in or going to or rehearsals during the week, whether it's a weekend or weeknight, going to my car, it's late at night, and I've never really felt that overwhelming threat. Um, it definitely feels overall like a safer place to live. I mean, sure, you should lock your cars, you should always be vigilant, but like I said, I've lived or visited other cities and Sarasota definitely feels much safer than many of those and if you look at the stats Sarasota ranks as safer than many of those other major cities or even some of the minor cities so that's why safety made number three on my pro list for living in Sarasota number two on the pro list for living in Sarasota is the overall quality of life I can't even begin to explain just it's just tremendous here you know we have so much culture here and we have so many different multi-generational a lot of professional a lot in the medical field and in the teaching field and even if you know we have top-notch uh, health facilities here and educational facilities and boards and you know we're just a hop skip away from Tampa if you ever really wanted to hit even a bigger city it doesn't take long at all to get up into Tampa and spend a day there if you wanted to so the weather's amazing lots of people are active here they're always getting out and we have many areas throughout the county that are made and were created to bring people together I mean, just last night I had family in town. We went out and had some frozen yogurt to catch up. And then where we were at that mall outside, there's this little area, grassy green area where the kids could run off that sugar. And it's just overall, those little pockets of area lead to a higher quality of life where you can share space and time with those that you love and care for. And it seems like Sarasota really knew how to hit that nail on the head and how to create those spaces so that people come and share and just have a wonderful quality of life here in Sarasota. So that's why it made number two on my pro list and now we have it number one on my pro list now I have to admit this one may not pertain to all of you but it's super important and such a big draw and it is our free college and here's what I'm talking about Florida has a program called the bright futures and as of the recording of this video your child in high school keeps their grades up does volunteer hours and takes their tests and does well then they absolutely have an opportunity to go to any in-state college that is state college that is uh, in Florida and for a free ride.
right? So, I mean, how tremendous is that? It at least covers your tuition and in some instances, room and board. So it's a tremendous program. Now it is funded by the Florida Lotto program. So if you're not into gambling, sorry, at least you get to benefit from it, whether or not you play the lotto. So it's a tremendous asset to our state. And of course that's statewide, not just Sarasota, but I think it's still a huge perk to moving here to the area because you'll benefit from it. So free college made my number one list on the pro list for living in Sarasota. Now, to be fair, we've got to talk about the cons. And today I have 10 cons for living in Sarasota, Florida. And we're going to start this out at number 10 being it is quite clicky. And here's what I mean by that. You know, so many people who move here to the area are from other places. They're not necessarily from here. It's actually really funny and rare to meet someone who's actually from here and has grown up here and has been here for their whole life. Uh, most people come from other states, a lot of northerners, a lot of westerners. So it can be tricky to kind of plug in when you first move here. But one of the things I always suggest is to join a group. We have so many groups. Everything has a group. If you like to paint watercolor, there's a group for that. If you like to play pickleball, there's a group for that. If you want to play tennis, there's a group for that. And sometimes some communities have a club already built in, right? We have country clubs here. We have membership and social clubs. So you name it. If you like to dance, there's a group for that. So just like there's an app for it, there's a group for it here in Sarasota. And my biggest recommendation is that you plug in so that you immediately have your social network in place and your support system in place between churches and activities and living members there's something for everyone here and you'll definitely want to plug in otherwise it can feel like you're really isolated and you don't know a lot of people and it's hard to meet people just going to the grocery store so <laughs> definitely plug in but that's why it made number 10 on my cons list number nine on my cons list is ironically the sun. Yes, I know. I mean, here we are in this beautiful weather, but the truth is, is if you're overly sensitive to either heat or sun, because maybe you have a higher chance or higher risk of getting skin cancer, this may not be the best choice for you because we do get a lot of sunshine here and you have to be careful. You have to wear your sunscreen. You need to wear your hats and sunglasses. And if you're going to be out in the sun all day, you know, wear protective covering and just be super careful and cautious. Lord knows our dermatologists in the area get a lot of business so just be very very careful out here with the sunshine and if it's too much then maybe it's not for you but our endless what it seems like sunshine can be a bit much for some so I had to put that as number nine on our cons list coming in at number eight on the cons list are storms now some people live for this stuff I know my husband he's a bit of a storm chaser I mean Tampa is known as the number one lightning capital of the world can you believe that and the truth is is we get a lot of storms in the area. I'm not just talking the major ones like hurricanes that everyone hears about. We get some serious thunderstorms sometimes. They don't happen often, but when they do, especially during the summer months, they can get intense. Sometimes pets can really go crazy. Sometimes people really, that triggers them. So if that's a super sensitive subject for you and you're not really big into storms, then this may not be the best area for you. But I can attest to, they can also bring some wonderful, welcoming rain and water and they can be beautiful as well if you respect them. And with those storms, sometimes we can get some road flooding and sometimes people just forget how to drive. So it can be really tricky, but that's why storms made number eight on my cons list. Number seven on my cons list of living in Sarasota is traffic. Now, to be honest, this is a fairly recent issue. Just in the past four or five years, it's, we've had such growth that our infrastructure is trying to catch up. And it is. I mean, we can see that roads and everything are being expanded and widened and, and changed. So that's a good sign, but it doesn't get rid of the fact that right now traffic can still be a beast. Where it used to be a joke here in town, I, I kid you not that to get anywhere it only took 20 minutes or less. I mean, and I mean, it meant anywhere. It just took 20 minutes or less. It was a bit of an inside joke to locals. Well, now, not so much. I mean, it can take a lot more than that, anywhere from 30 to 45, sometimes even an hour to go north to south here in the county. So it's definitely been an issue. And if you're not in a hurry, it's okay. But for those of us who are trying to get somewhere and have to be somewhere on time and are sometimes running late, it can be tricky. So you've got to really be accountable. And there seems to be just constantly accidents a lot especially motorcyclists, you know, you've just got to be so careful and bicycling.
definitely, we do share the road here. There are bicycle lanes on much of our roads, but you just have to be super careful and be paying attention and watching out because traffic can be really, really, really a headache here in town. If, if, especially if you're traveling and driving in busier times in the morning and your rush hour times. So now we don't have tons of highways like many, many of the major cities where it can get really, really dense and, and a lot of bad traffic accidents, but it can become an, an issue and a problem. So that's why traffic made number seven on my cons list. Now, number six on my cons list may be a little bit controversial, but it's got to be said. This is a very political climate. And I know that, sure, you can probably find that throughout the, the country. But the truth is that Florida, boy, we are passionate about our politics. And it doesn't matter whether you're left or right or in the middle or wherever. But we can be really, really passionate about our politics. Lots of people love putting all their stickers on their cars and standing over highways and, and hooting and hollering. And it's just, it's a, it's a very passionate thing side thing that people love to do here so especially midterm around midterms and around our major elections it can get pretty hot and heavy here around politics so just be prepared it's not unusual for people to come right out and start talking about it in public or just meeting you for the first time at the grocery store it has to be said but it's why it made number six on my cons list number five on my cons list is cost of living in general, Sarasota County and Manatee County do have a higher cost of living throughout the state and throughout the nation. So you'll definitely want to catch my cost of living video that I made about this, but it can be more expensive to live here. Housing is more expensive. Food, even though we don't get taxed on food, it can be kind of pricey is what I hear, especially from those who are traveling from the north. And uh, things to do if there aren't free things, if you're not taking advantage of the free things, anything that does cost money, the tickets, and, and entry fees can be quite pricey and then there's parking and then there's food and so restaurants typically I mean I know my husband and I we can easily spend a hundred dollars on a night out at restaurant and we don't even drink so that's where uh, cost of living here can be really expensive on the upside of that though I do have to say there still are a lot of free things to do the, the beach is still free there are open-air markets you can always sit out by a beautiful on a bench by a beautiful lake and that's free so yes you can take advantage Advantage of the free things and uh, but overall cost of living is a little higher than the average in the country so that's why it made my list at number five on my cons list number four on my cons list may surprise you and it's spotty cell service oh this is so frustrating i mean i can't tell you how random and how frustrating it is to be out in certain places that totally seem like they should have great cell service and yet you've got a dead spot and um, there's definitely two major ones that i know of but just randomly if if you're moving here to the area and cell service and wi-fi and bluetooth are super important to you definitely make sure you check that out in whichever neighborhood or area you're looking at moving into because it can be so frustrating when you just want to go out for a walk and have your headphones in and you get no data or cell service to stream your radio or stream your podcast or anything like that so definitely the cell service oh it can be frustrating and we have all the major carriers ATT Verizon T-Mobile you name it but it doesn't seem to matter it's just frustrating so it's not terrible but it's definitely an issue and it's why it made my number four on my cons list. Number three on my cons list for he living here in Sarasota has to be the insurance. Insurance is just expensive here. And I'm just going to say it, you know, whether it's your homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance, car insurance, health insurance, you name it, it's pricier here. And I know with auto insurance, one of the biggest reasons is because we are a no fault state, meaning you're responsible for your auto insurance and your car, regardless of whose fault. And that's kind of why it can be a little pricier, but it's definitely a cost issue. And, you know, you have to take that into account, you know, with homeowner's insurance, you have your regular homeowners for content and for fire damage and for things falling on the roof. But then you also have flood insurance in many areas here in our county. You are required by some lenders to carry flood insurance, but I would suggest that anybody who lives here in the county consider, strongly consider getting flood insurance on their property because you know what? Lord knows what can happen. And uh, I know that in some cases, even if like a tree falls on your roof and now you'd want to talk to your insurance person about this. I'm no expert 
water, but I've heard stories where a tree falls on the roof. Now you have water entering the house. Well, who covers that water? You know, technically that's water damage and that's considered flood. So I don't know. But what I do know is that insurance costs can be much higher than average than, than what people expect when they're moving here from other places. I know our auto insurance when we moved from California just nearly doubled and you know, we had, didn't have any accidents or anything like that on our record. It's just living here in Florida. It was more expensive for two vehicles. So something to consider it is why it made my number three on my cons list. Number two on my cons list, and we're getting closer and closer to that number one surprise one, has to be allergies. I mean, the truth is we've got lots of palms and oaks here in the area. These beautiful moss covered oaks can also trigger some serious allergies. And it doesn't seem to kind of have, we, we have some heavier seasons of it, but overall it kind of can happen throughout the year. And people who really struggle with outdoor seasonal allergies, this can just be miserable. And you've got to take your medicine or do you use your holistic methods, but it can really take its toll on your sinuses and your bronchioles and everything and I know that most of us just commiserate and we just share in our misery to deal with it for the few times you know one or two weeks out of the year where it can get really bad because of course the rest of the year is amazing but allergies are absolutely something to consider when moving here to the area and it's why it made number two on my cons list. Now before I share the number one thing that made my cons list for living here in Sarasota Florida I just want to remind you I'm always talking to people who are looking to move to the Sarasota area and people just like you who have questions. Maybe you've got a question. Well, feel free to drop it in the comment below. That way I can answer it and help you out. I'm always enjoying making these videos for you and uh, it's never too soon to reach out. So whether you're thinking of moving next week or next year, you can always find my information below and call, text, email, and let me know if you have any questions, leave them for me. Now let's get back to it. So without further ado, the number one thing that hit my cons list is the unusable water. I know it seems crazy. We're surrounded by water, yet much of it is not necessarily accessible. It's either on private property or it's uh, it's not considered safe to use, whether it's gators or anything like that. So if you are thinking of wanting to fish all the time or be a beach goer or have water sports like jet skis or kayak, or paddle boarding, any of those things, there are areas where you can do that, but there's also many areas that you can't do that. So you've got to know. And for me, I feel like so many people want to move to the area because of access to water. And the truth is, is that much of the retention ponds that are made by people within neighborhoods or out throughout the community, they're not uh, for just sitting or or using they're just for looks basically they're also utilitarian because they're used to help prevent flooding so they're not for fishing and for recreational use now we do have a lot of beaches we do have a lot of public beaches and a lot of parking and a lot of areas you can go to but it just surprised me that there was so much water around yet much of it we can't necessarily use so because of that it hit my number one on my con list for living in Sarasota, Florida. So there you have it. All the pros, all the cons for living here in Sarasota, Florida. And it's the truth. It's all of it. And I hope you found this super helpful, especially if you're looking to move to the area. And if you ever have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm always answering questions for you to help you. And until the next video, take care.